Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Layer by Layer. So over the weekend, I accidentally broke my little nephew's bubble gun, his beloved bubble wand thing broke. The batteries died and I was trying to change out the batteries and there's a little part in here that keeps it together and that little piece snapped off. So I figured, oh man, I remember a YouTube comment that talked about this. So a week ago, Shawnee Union on YouTube asked, hey, could you show how to design a replacement part? For example, a battery door cover on your remote. Maybe it fell off and now you need to print a new one. Love the show. Thank you so much, Sean. That is exactly what happened to me. And it's probably one of the best practical uses for a 3D printer, right? The idea that you can sort of make a cheap part instead of having to replace this whole thing, you can just remake this little piece here. So I have it, uh, I have it modeled here, printed out, and you can, I even added a little plus and minus uh, symbol. So um, the cool thing about this battery holder is that it has the metal contact for the battery built into it. So um, there's three little pieces that hold it together. There's a little nub in the center, and that's, uh, that little nub goes in the center hole of the metal contact piece. And then there's also a guard that keeps the two metal pieces, or that keeps a single metal piece in the, in the center there. So that's what these little guards do. And then the last part is the clip, and that's the piece that actually broke off from this. So that's a little piece that comes up and then over, and then that keeps the piece in there. So this is a way to, uh, this is a perfect little um, part to, 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 to remake with 3D printing, right? So I'll start off with um, making a primitive here, a little box, and I'll put it in the center here. And I'll just start um, pasting in the values here. So for the width, it needs to be 32.8 by 17.4. And then the, uh, the thickness is going to be 1.4 mil. And then we'll hit Enter. And then now that's our little base. OK, so the next thing I'll do is I want to add those rounded uh, corners here. So what I'll do is I'll hit E on my keyboard for fill it. And then I'll start clicking on the corners here, on the, the edges. So I'll have to select four of them. And then I'll start bringing this in. And you'll see that I can't get it exact. I want the whole thing. So what I'll do is I'll divide 17.45 um, uh, to get my, uh, my fillet. So I have my fillet there, which is 8.725. And it makes it perfectly round there so that it's um, symmetrical there. OK, so that's our first base part. The next thing I'll do is I will make our little nub piece. Uh, for the battery contact. So I'll click on the cylinder, and just like with uh, most uh, new objects, it'll snap to the grid or to the center of an object. So I'll just roll over here until I get to the center. It'll snap somewhere. There you go. And then I'll punch in um, the, uh, the, the little nub part needs to be 1.5 mil by 2 millimeters thick. OK, so there's a little nub. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll create the, uh, the first part for the guard that keeps the metal contact in place. So again, I'll, I'll go in the center here. I'm making a, uh, a little primitive box. And I'll type in um, the width here is 14. And it needs to be by uh, 1.6 mil thick. And then I'll put uh, 2 millimeters tall. <clears throat> or actually, it's 1.6 tall as well. So I'll just hit Enter. And the thing is that it needs to be, it needs to have a, there needs to be two of them, right? And there needs to be a clearance of uh, 9.4 millimeters. So what I need to do is I need to move it up. Um, I need to move it up some and then um, accommodate for the actual width of the shape so that, because uh, you'll notice that the anchor is in the middle. So if I move it that way by one mil, it's actually not moving by one mil because it's in the center of it. So we want the edge to edge to be the distance of, of uh, 9.4. So what I'll do is I'll click on it and I'll move it up by 5.5, negative 5.5. And then what I should have done is, let me undo that. <laughs> so what I need to do is I need to make a copy. So copy and paste it. And it'll have it transformed for me already. So I'll move it down to 5.5 like that. And then I'll select the one that's in the center and then move that one up by 5.5 which is actually negative 5.5. And then what we'll do to, to verify that we have the right clearance is we'll go up to adjust, click on the measure tool, and then select these two edges here to find out what the distance is. And it's 9.4, exactly what we want. OK, now if you notice, uh, since I placed it down on top of the, uh, now we have the two pieces floating. So what I'll do is I'll just come up here, hit Command-T with them selected both, and just move it down. That way it's touching the, uh, the base there. Okay. 
So now we have our two or three little pieces to hold uh, the metal contact in place. And the next thing I'll do is I will create the standoff. So the standoff is what's going to hold the screw and it's a little bit above here. So I'll start working around up here. So I'll come up to primitives, select cylinder, and then I'll change the radius to, um, let's see here, four. And it's going to be 4.6 tall. And then there's our standoff. The next thing I need to do is make the, uh, the, the mounting hole, right? The hole that where the screw thread is going to come through. So I'll just roll over the top of that and put one point, it's going to be 1.4, right? Yep, 1.4 for, for that. And then the height can be, uh, you know, 10 or so. That way it's, uh, it has enough height so that it can cut through the whole thing. So what we'll do is select that, that shape we made and then we'll bring it down so that uh, it's intersecting through the, the whole thing because we're going to use that to cut um, a hole out. Now the next thing I'll do is I need to make that recess area here in the center of the standoff so that the screw head can, can get recessed into that part. So it actually needs to be done on the bottom here since it's printed that, since it's going to be printed uh, this way and this is the bottom. So I'll come up here, or actually come down here, and then um, roll over again in the center of our little mounting hole, <coughs> and then I'll put in the, um, the actual recess. So it needs to be 2.65, and then the width can be somewhere like 6, because it just needs to cut into it for, for about um, 2 millimeters. So I'll move it into place here. I'll move it up like that. So that, see how it's not flush yet? I'll, I'll do a little quick um, snap to make it flush. So I'll hit the snap um, tool. And I'll select this top edge, and then that top edge, and then I'll just snap it into place there. So now it's completely flush with the standoff. Now I can select it and then move it up by two millimeters, because that's how much I need to eat away at it. And I'll, I'll just change um, the materials now so that I can um, so that I can see through everything. So like that, I'll get rid of the overlay so it's not blue, and I'll click on these as well. There you go. Now everything's see through. Yay! Okay, now you'll notice that it's out of, it's not really intersecting yet. So what I'll do is now that I have the three created, I'll move it in the, in the right spot that I want. So just select them all three with a marquee, and then I'll move it down here. And I'm not exact on, um, on measurement, so what I noticed though is that the, um, the actual mounting hole is exactly on the edge of, of this part. So I'll just move that as closely as I can. It pretty much is pretty close there. Let me maybe by 0.1. There you go. That way, it's uh, it looks pretty much uh, like it does here. That tends to work out well. Okay. The last thing we need to create is the little uh, the little clip area that's going to go on this edge, and that's what keeps the uh, the actual um, the actual uh, door cover in place. Um, so there's a little um, opening inside of the uh, inside of the enclosure of the bubble wand and that's where the little clip is fixed into into this area here and that's why you can't take it out like that because there's a clip in there so here's here's how to build it right so I will start with a primitive again a box and I'll start on the on the lower edge here and then I'll move it in the, in, in the spot so it needs to be uh, 15 millimeters wide with a length of 1.6 and the tallness of two millimeters just like that. So now that I've created it, what I need to do is to um, shift it or move it in the right spot. So I have it selected, I'll hit Command T so I can move it, and I'll start moving it in the spot. And you'll notice that I can't get it exactly like that. So what I'll do is I'll do the same trick I just did with the standoff. I'll hit um, Snap, Snap that to that, and then I'll hit D on my keyboard to drop it exactly on the on the grid there, and now I can select it and then move it into place. So by two here, 1.6 actually, and then and then two up or 1.4. <laughs> there you go. And now, um, now that we have a little bar um, or a little clip, rather, um, what I'll do is I will hit K on my keyboard, and then when I start hovering over edges and surfaces, you'll notice there's a little manipulator, right, for for translating. So what happens when I click on this top is now I can shift this whole thing around like that, and then it'll um, the uh, the shape will just sort of conform to wherever um, it's being shifted to. So I'm going to try to make it at 45 degree angle. So that'll be by two millimeters, and you'll see it's a sharp, nice 45 degree angle, and that's going to be our little clip. And that's pretty much. Um, all the pieces that we need to make for this thing. Um, so I'll go ahead and start merging things with my hotkey 
or rather up here, go to Combine, Merge, and then start selecting uh, the shapes that need to be merged. So that's the base, the nub area guard, and the clip. And now it's one piece. And then from here, I can subtract, come up here to Combine and go to Subtract, select our main piece, and then select the uh, mounting hole and the recessed area here. And then um, we get our cutouts. And then the last thing I'll do is to optimize this for 3D printing um, with no support material. I'll come up here um, and then click E on my keyboard. And that'll let me create a chamfer on, on certain edges. So I'll click uh, on this edge here. And I'll just bring it in like that. And then I'll put 1.25 to make it exact. And that way it'll print that area, with, since now it has a 45 degree. Um, it'll print with no support materials. It'll print lovely. <laughs> So the last thing we can do is, of course, use the text tool to make, uh, to make some labels. So um, I talked about uh, using the text tool in a previous episode. So I won't go into all that, but just know that uh, that's what I did for the, uh, for the plus and minus sign for the symbols there. I didn't actually model them. I just used type. So that's cool. And then you can just move it in the spot or whatever you want, or wherever you want like that. I won't spend too much time on that, but that's pretty much the shape. Um, the next thing I'll show you is what it looks like when you slice it. So here is one Simplify 3D, which is my preferred slicer. And you'll see that it draws out the, um, all the layers. And it's got about uh, four, uh, four layers on the top and bottom so that there's no infill. It's just 100% infill, really. And this prints out exceptionally well. It's actually a really, really strong part um, when you print it in PLA or ABS. I printed it in um, and, a and PLA, and pink PLA, and it works really, really well. Here it is working. Yeah, and now it's super easy uh, to take this part out and change out the batteries now that, um, now that it's been, um, you know, remade and fixed. So there you guys have it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I almost dropped it and broke it again. Thank you so much for watching. Um, definitely let me know in the comments what you guys think and let me know what other cool things I should cover um, you guys are helping me create all these things. So thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody.